Hi, I'm Darrell Kessner and welcome to the Better Golf Club. Today I want to talk to you about one of the most important aspects of the game of golf, and that is the short game. The short game consists of chipping, pitching, sand play, and putting. Short game guru David Pels says this part of the game is 65% of the game. Well, I agree with that, but it is so very important. I want to share a good story with you. The best learning experience of my golfing career. It's 1982 on the PGA Tour at the Buick Classic in Westchester Country Club. I'm paired the first two rounds with Seve Ballesteros. Seve was number one in the world at that time. Just got through winning Augusta. I was so excited to, uh, to be paired with him and playing with him there. Well, we go out the first day. He hits the longest tiring straight drives you can ever imagine. Good crisp iron shots. Pitches the ball beautifully close to the hole. Putts like a demon. You can't believe how, how perfect this round of golf was. He shot 65, grabbed the first round lead. I hit the ball okay that day, shot 75. But I walked off the golf course more devastated about what I saw than my score. Because I realized that there was no way I could possibly hit the ball that well. And if it takes that kind of ball striking to win golf tournaments, I can never win a golf tournament. But if I didn't see it with my own eyes, I wouldn't have believed it. The very next day, we go out, he duck hooks his first drive. He blocks his second drive in the rough. The rough was very deep that week because it's the week before the U.S. Open. So it's very hard to get up and down. He has to pitch out up in front of the greens and then rely on a little pitch shot. He hits his iron shots in bunkers. He's all over the golf course. He hit five greens in regulation that day, but he hauled two bunker shots and chipped in once. He shot 68. It was an incredible round of golf. I hit 17 greens in regulation that day, very proud of myself, but I shot 71. He went on to win the golf tournament. And that's when it came, I became aware that the greatest players in the world don't hit it perfectly all the time. But when they don't, they have a great short game to back them up. Well, you and I may not be able to hit, uh, hit the ball like a touring pro, but with the right technique and the right feel, we can incorporate a short game that can rival theirs. So let's take a look at that aspect of the game today. Okay, this is a perfect situation for a chip shot. A chip shot is described as a shot that has more ground time than air time. To get the ball over the fringe and landing on the green and rolling like a putt. The chip shot is played from close to the edge of the green off closely mown area because we don't need a lot of force to get the ball out of the rough and onto the green. That's why we're going to choose a club that with very little loft. To this pin over here, I might use a 7-iron. To this pin over to the right, right here, because the pin is closer to me, because it's a little bit downhill, I might use the 9-iron. The technique is going to be the same. By doing the same technique, I can get very good at it, but I have to analyze the situation of pin placement, the distance up or down the hill for the correct club selection. But again, a chip shot, maximum ground time, less air time. Let me demonstrate.
Okay, now let's talk about pitching the golf ball. The pitching the ball is described by a golf shot that has more air time and less ground time. It's optimum when you're 30, 40 yards off the green or even further. When we have to go over a bunker in, uh, to a pin that's very tight, we need the ball to stop. More air time than ground time. These, unlike the, the chip shots that are used with less loft, say chipping with a seven iron or a nine iron, pitching the ball, you're gonna need your wedges. In my bag, I have three wedges. I've got a strong pitching wedge, which is 48 degrees. I have a mid wedge, it's 54, and I have a lofted wedge that is 60. Uh, whatever your configuration, some people have 46, 52, 58. They have nice gaps in between them, to, so they are versatile around the green. When you're pitching the ball, you need to have the correct loft. Okay, now let's talk about the bunker game. The bunker game can intimidate a lot of novice golfers, but it is a very simple shot for good golfers. It is a very simple shot because they have the right technique. And this is what we're gonna get across to you today. What you have to know is we are gonna make the club skid or glide through the sand. It is not going to dig. If the club digs, the ball will not get out of the bunker but if the club slides to the sand, we can blast the ball out every time. Well, what makes the club glide? In the sand wedge, we have a huge flange, this big hunk of metal on the back of the club, on the bottom of the club right here. And what that does, when we have the face open and the flange comes in contact with the sand first, it will make the club glide and slide under the ball, keeping loft on the club, getting the ball up out of the bunker. But if the leading edge comes in first through a bad setup, then the leading edge will dig into the sand deeper and deeper, not letting the ball get out, stopping the club in your hands. So with the right technique in the bunker, you don't have to be intimidated by the sand anymore. Nothing feels better than hitting a beautiful bunker shot out of the sand and the ball landing next to the hole and tapping it in for par. Okay, let's talk about the most personal part of the game, putting. This day and age, we have long putters, we have belly putters, we have short putters, we have conventional grips, we have left hand low, we've got split hand, we've got the claw grip. Whatever your personal preference might be, putting, there's a few very essential things that good putters do. And those things are, in order of importance, they have to aim the putter at the hole. It's gotta be perfectly aimed at the target for you to make the putt. 
you have, secondly, you have to hit the sweet spot of the putter. Time and time again, hitting the sweet spot can give you good feedback on your distance control. And thirdly, and lastly, the putter face path has to be fairly straight back and straight through. So to be a better putter, no matter whether you're using a long putter, grip styles, whatever, the fundamentals of putter face aim, solidness of contact, and your path, if those are consistent, you're going to make more putts and reduce those scores. So to wrap up the short game, you have to practice 65% of the time on this part of the game. Chipping, pitching, sand play, putting. Working on the correct technique will enable you to shoot lower scores, whether you're trying to break that 100 barrier or whether you're trying to get a single digit handicap. For the Better Golf Club, I'm Daryl Kessner. <laughs>